My, my name is Dr. Clay Elliott, and I am a, a small ruminant nutritionist here for Purina and uh, work with inside uh, the sheep and goat businesses. Uh, very good. Thanks, Frank. I appreciate that. Um, anyway, so I have done several of these Facebook Lives. We've done uh, several of these WebExes for uh, dealers and uh, everybody uh, that has interest. Uh, we, we've been we've been involved, I guess, Maggie Ambergy and myself, both are technical consultants throughout the country. And, and we have done a multitude of these. And, oh, man, we've seen anywhere from... 12 to 77 folks onto these uh, Facebook Lives or WebExes, and we appreciate that. But um, just, just to get started, I wanted to uh, just to let you guys know we appreciate you tuning in and listening to what we've got to tell you today. I do have a list of questions here to, to go through, and I appreciate those that were pre-sent. Um, those of you who have some questions, uh, please send those on that chat forum and I'd be glad to try and get those addressed. But uh, in terms of uh, the goat products that we we have and that we promote, um, we are we, we have a brand new product out that's called uh, Grower Finisher 14, Goat Grower Finisher 14, which is an all life stage product for uh, all speed, I mean all goats, all ages, okay, as a creep feed as a uh, pelleted feed for, for the does, pelleted feed for the bucks, etc. cetera. Um, all life stages as a grower, as a, as a finisher, etc. It is a fifth, uh, 14 protein, four and a half fat, and uh, very palatable, and it's been really, really good. It's been accepted very well. It's uh, starting to lead our market now in terms of the goat business, and it was brought onto, onto the platform, I believe, the 1st of February. So this product has done a, done a really good job. The other thing that I wanted to add is we still have the old standby uh, Goat Grower 16, which is a textured feed. That has been extremely good for a long, long time. And I imagine a lot of you folks that we're talking to use that uh, regularly. And that's a great feed. It's very palatable. Um, it does contain ammonium chloride, as does the Goat Grower 14. Um, the uh, Purina Goat Chow is another one that we have that's been a good textured feed. That one does not contain ammonium chloride. And so those of you folks who are interested or have some questions regarding urinary calculi and ammonium chloride and how that works, why well, I'd be glad to talk to you about that uh, some during this but I need you to be aware, you know, if, if you folks are having some urinary calculi issues or some urinary tract blockages with those goats, that that is uh, the Purina goat chow does not have the acidifier in it. So keep that in mind. Um, why, why ammonium chloride? What happens when we get to urinary calculi? And that is, that is something that's common in both sheep and goats. Um, and it happens when we get, um, you know, a high level of calcium or a high level of phosphorus or a calcium to phosphorus imbalance based upon the nutrition. And we get stones. It's nothing more than a kidney stone like um, you and I would get in, in humans. It's a, a sharp stone that blocks their urethral passage and they can no longer urinate. It blocks them off. And if we don't take care of it, if we don't unblock them or, or prevent the blockages, why at some point that bladder can bust. And once the bladder breaks, obviously they're filled with toxins and those animals will, will pass. So it's very important in my opinion that we, uh, we keep that in mind and that we keep our calcium to phosphorus ratio correct in our nutrition. And then also that we supply an acidifier, which would be the um, ammonium chloride, or it could be uh, a couple of other things um, that we use as acidifiers as well. But ammonium chloride is our is our uh, first line of defense, I guess, if you will. So why why the two to one ratio? Well, if we get phosphorus out too high, okay, phosphorus is actually what tends to create our uh, stones. 
And so if we get that calcium to phosphorus ratio of two to one inverted, you can guarantee, I can almost guarantee you with 99.9% .9 certainty, we're going to have stone issues. And so the best way to prevent is to make sure uh, that we have that calcium to phosphorus ratio correct. And, and you know, you would assume that most um, feeds, feed companies, et cetera, would, would keep that correct. And Purina, we work very hard to do that. Um, we, get, we have a guaranteed analysis on those uh, feeds. And so we try very hard to, to keep that at, at at least a two to one, if not more, relative to calcium. Um, to try to prevent some of this from happening because we know it's a problem. Now, when we just start talking about feed stuffs in general, okay, grass, alfalfa, grass haze, forages, etc., um, or even just uh, ingredients like corn itself. <coughs> corn itself has a has an inverted calcium to phosphorus ratio. So if you're supplementing goats with extra corn or cracked corn or something like that you're actually throwing that calcium to phosphorus ratio off and you're going to in fact uh, have some issues at some point in time. So we want to we'll supply a balanced ration that is has a two to one calcium to phosphorus ratio. And if we can supply an, an acidifier with that to help keep those stones or prevent those stones from happening, that's the best, okay? That's the best line of defense that we have. So, um, how do we know if our forages, it, it, one of the questions I had was, how do we know if our forages are um, two to one in terms of calcium to phosphorus? You know what? The best way to know is to test it. Um, test your hay. And I would tell you that um, a lot of times alfalfa hay is, is good relative to calcium to phosphorus, although I have had some tested that is too high in phosphorus. And then you know, automatically folks think, well, it's because the calcium is so high that we're having urinary calculi, and, and that's not the case. The phosphorus level is out of whack. So test test your hay, test your forage. Um, that, that's the best way to know. Now, regarding feed and supplementation, um, ours are all at at least a two to one, and that's the best, plus that acidifier. Um, the... Other uh, thing that I, I would tell you, the other the other feed stuff that I would tell you that we need to have involved is is mineral, Purina goat mineral. I'm a huge believer in mineral, and the reason I am is because uh, there is there is unless the feed that you have is 100% fortified, that means it has fortification means it has all of the daily recommended amounts of all the vitamins and minerals that those goats require. And it, it can happen. You can find a feed like that. It's probably not one of ours, but you can maybe find one like that. But it will be extremely costly because when we provide that kind of fortification um, to meet all of the requirements uh, without having to supply mineral, why it, it will be costly. And that's why I am adamant about supplying a loose mineral uh, we do have Purina goat mineral that has been newly updated here this spring that uh, I think is a, a tremendously good product. Uh, I like it so much because it has a high level of calcium in it to help you through gestation and especially the hypocalcemia issues that happen the last couple of weeks prior to parturition. Um, it helps reduce some of that, <clears throat> keeps those does from going into uh, a, you know ketosis when once they go get low in calcium, they get weak, they go down, they stop eating, and then ketosis happens, which is a negative energy balance. And once all that happens, uh, well, those, those kids are in distress and so is mom. So if we can figure out how to help that or prevent some of that, I would recommend. The other good part about the uh, Purina goat mineral is it is, has the Avela 4 pack in it, which is a bioavailable source, a highly chelated source of zinc, manganese, cobalt, and copper, and all of those play a role in reproduction, but the zinc plays a huge role in terms of hoof health and foot scald, prevention of, of uh, foot rot, things like that. It helps to prevent some of those things. Now, doesn't mean um, we're going to have 100% of your, your does not come down with any kind of hoof issues, but it will help to, 
to uh, prevent some of it. And we found it here at our place in our use. When we, when we run the uh, bioavailable source of zinc through our use, we have a lot less problems to deal with hooves. And when you're an old fat kid from Oklahoma, you certainly don't appreciate bending over those ewes or does to cut their, their feet and deal with the problems. So I like to feed it and try to prevent it instead of having to deal with it. So that's uh, those are some recommendations that I have relative to nutrition. I like, the, I like our Purina goat mineral very well now. And I'll be honest with you, when I took this gig a few years ago, I, I did not like that mineral. And we have got it to where it does replicate our wind and rain sheet mineral formula. And that was kind of the go-to. That was one of the first projects that I, I did while I was involved with Purina is to create a good sheet mineral that I liked, that I felt was useful. And it, it has proven that reproductively and also to help us prevent some of that hypocalcemia stuff we've talked about. So... All right, um, uh, deworming, man, there's a hot topic, right? We all have worm issues, and uh, the best thing that I can tell you is to formica score those does and your ewes, and that means uh, get trained to, to look at their eyelids and their their gum lines and, and, and try to determine color. If those gals are pink in terms of their eyelids the and around their, the whites of their eyes, well, they, they are um, full of worms, okay? If they're really, really light pink or even white, you've got a problem. If they're bright pink, uh, almost red, why we've got great blood flow. What parasites do is, is they attach internally and then they just pull the blood and the nutrition from those ewes and does so that, man, they're, they're, all the nutrition's go into the worm package instead of uh, nutrition for the moms, so... That's why it's a problem. That's why we see death loss because we can get those gals so iron poor that they're weak and man, they just, uh, we, we can't keep them alive. So it is a problem. So that's my first uh, uh, line of defense is to Formica score those. And if you have a problem, then worm those, Wor worm your problems, okay? If, if you have does that are not showing signs and their, their coloration is right, then then let's not worm them. Let's leave them alone um, just so we don't end up with the resistance because we're, we're having so much trouble right now finding uh, wormers that work because we've used all of them so much. So with that being said, uh, that's my first, uh, first option for you. If we do need to worm them, what do we worm them with? Well, I'm just going to tell you what we do. I'm, I'm not a vet, okay? And so please don't don't go tell your vets that Clay Elliott said this. I, I'm a PhD in reproduction, not a not a DVM. But I'll tell you what we do relative to our use. And if we have problems, why we use Prohibit. <clears throat> we use actually um, a combination of Prohibit with Valbazin. And we will give them a dose of that. And then we will come back, uh, you know, uh, a day later um, and give them pro uh, Prohibit with um, Cydectin. So we, we bounce back and forth. Prohibit is always our base, though. That's an old, old, old wormer. It's um, what Levomisol, I believe, is, is the trade, um, uh, I guess, the science behind it. Uh, the science scientific name is Levomisol. And that thing has been really good to help get worms under control. But we've found some, some more effectiveness if we combine those with Valbazin or Cydectin. Okay, prohibit with valbazin and cydectin. Another wormer that we use is synanthic occasionally here uh, on our use. Um, so those are those are what we do from a worming standpoint. Um, I had a question that said, what are some of the most important things to consider if you're considering getting into the goat business? What are some what are some things you need to know ahead of time and well, that's a good question, and you folks that are on here might be able to help me with that better than I, but I would say that uh, um, we, we need to be able to have a place, you know, housing and some forage. These these goats, goats are browsers, so if they can get into some, uh, you know, some low-hanging trees, some branches, some, um, 
browse basically instead of just straight grass why well, they like that a lot better and they do better on it um, so I would say we need to make sure you have proper um, ground proper land proper housing um, and then uh, a source for quality nutrition hay um, the co-op the feed stores the dealers etc um, and then I think it's also important that you uh, you, you make friends with somebody who knows something about goats, okay? So that you have someone you can bounce ideas off of and ask some questions. Um, the other thing I would tell you is these things are athletic, and so you'll need some fencing that will hold them in, unless you'd like them to stand on your car or whatever like that. But I would make sure I had some quality fencing um, because these these little rascals will go have a good time. They are, they're fun to have around. Um You'll enjoy watching them. You'll enjoy seeing them play. They'll play with your dogs. They'll play with your cats. They'll play with each other. And so that it, it's a lot of fun to sit in the backyard and watch them. Um, but, you know, be aware that there are some things you need to, to keep on your mind. So with that, um, what other questions do you all have? You can send me some chat questions if, if you have something. Um, I, I can tell you that we have, we have changed up an awful lot of our... Uh, our emphasis relative to the small ruminant business over the last three years here at Purina and interested in not only the, the, uh, the backyard goat owner, but also the commercial goat folks who are running, you know, hundreds to thousands of these things out on pasture. And so we've developed some products like that goat grower 14 and, and the Purina goat mineral to kind of help both instead of maybe be one sided to, to one area or the other. And so anyway, any questions for me? I, I know that uh, within, within Purina, there are um, two of us that are involved in, in the small ruminant business, I and Maggie Ambergy, and we, we do travel a whole bunch uh, around the country doing these types of meetings and and we like being able to be in front of you folks and meet you and talk to you. Um, this COVID-19 thing has sure slowed us down relative to our travel and we've done a lot more of the WebEx and Facebook Lives, which is great, but we, we are ready to get back on the road and, and come see y'all. A uh, question here that says blackberries in Oregon are, are uh, goats good at helping control these? And, uh, you know, you're asking me a little, um, I would assume if it's a browse, then they will help control it. Yes. Um, I, I would think that that would be helpful. What else do you all have for me? Any... Uh, any folks that are not using a, uh, a mineral or mineral supplement source for their goats, um, I, I would certainly encourage you folks to, to reconsider that because what those minerals do is actually help to balance the, the diet so that they have complete vitamin and mineral fortification. So please, please consider that. If you are feeding mostly pasture, um, forage, etc. That's great. I, I'm not going to try to push you on to, on to feeding a feed. Um, the only thing I would ask is, you know, how, how's the best way to, to keep those goats from getting urinary calculi? If you don't know what the calcium to phosphorus level is, why I would consider that acidifier and ammonium chloride source to help prevent that. Um, but other than that, man, I get it. Um, nutritional needs for meat goats, pet goats, and dairy goats. Yeah, um, that's a great question. There are differences. And if you are, if you're in the meat goat business, um, those animals require a higher level of copper and a higher, actually a higher level of energy, for maintenance, energy at lactation, etc., than than maybe a, a backyard goat would. So those animals would require some supplementation that has some energy or some fat level in it. 
Now our backyard goats um, that we just have a couple hanging out and you know those things they'll traditionally get extra fat on you. You'll get you'll add some extra body condition to them and and I know that those we, we would like to feed them and have them come up to us and, and that kind of stuff. And I would recommend if we're going to use a treat, I would I would recommend using a hay source as a treat for them simply because those those animals definitely will get heavier in body condition. And so a higher roughage, lower energy diet would would certainly make more sense. Now, with respect to those dairy goats, when, when those gals are in lactation, why they require an awful lot of fat and energy. And so we do have a dairy parlor products that are a, a 16 or an 18% protein that have some, some e extra energy in them. So absolutely. Um, all right, we've got another question that says, um, uh, uh, browsing uh, grasses. We're interested in goats to help keep underbrush down for the fire prevention. Absolutely. I mean, they'll obviously they'll graze. If you have quality grass, they're going to graze it. Um, just, I know that they will definitely, uh, they, they, they are browsers to begin with. And so they do like to be able to, to get some, some coarser stock, um, to put into them, but certainly they're going to graze forage. There's no doubt. So, you know, if you've got, if that's what your plan is, why populate your property and it will certainly, they'll, they'll eat the forage. They'll eat the grass. Absolutely. Good question. Anything else on y'all's mind today? How big of a shelter do I need? That's a good question. You know what? I always, uh, just a rule of thumb is uh, roughly uh, three foot of barn space per animal. Okay, so if you've got, uh, uh, you know, 10, 10 does, you need a 30, 30 foot kind of area to cover. Um, so I, I just... That's that's sparing, right? So if we're talking bunk space, you can probably get by with, you know, eight inches. But if you need a place for those gals to be able to shelter and lay down, etc., then I would recommend about three foot. So good question. All right, folks, y'all have a great day. Thank you.